geopolitics and how we need to interpret, to decipher uh, present situation. There are many levels and many possibilities. Today, everybody is um, obliged to take a side. If we accept Russia is right, so let us repeat Russian propaganda. If we are on the side of the West, that means immediately that Putin is criminal, Russian is, uh, all Russia is wrong, Russian people is barbarians supporting such regime. So everything follows from our taking, moment of taking of position. There are only two positions, no three. So it is difficult to stay neutral in that situation, but I, I will try. Not maybe neutral, because I'm not neutral at all. But uh, I would prefer to put the situation in some context, not to give arguments of Russian spot, you know them, I presume, not defend against accusation of the Western position, you know that much better, and I think that we are living in the reality of two close languages in the structuralist sense. So there are two languages, foreign languages, without translation. Western language, Western language in the sense of structuralism language against discourse. And all possible discourse is put in one language or in other language. So discourse depends on the language. And when there is the same language with different discourses, we could understand each other. When we have two uh, languages, without translation, so everybody hears, everybody hears only what is said in, the, in his or her language. And the speech of the other is similar to the black, uh, black noise or white noise that is called white noise. So something, some sounds without a meaning. So when we are in the language of the West, Language of the West doesn't hear and doesn't want to hear anything from the language of the Russia. And the language of the West is almost the language of the world. So we are isolated and nobody is going to hear us. Good. So uh, um, now we are going to discover our proper language and established it as it should be done because we tried to speak Western language. We failed. Nobody understand what was said in our Russian version of broken English. So we, we tried, we failed. It's all over. Now we are going to, to speak our own language that we need first to establish, to defend, to re to, to reestablish, to uh, to to create to, in, in the new condition. Because too, too long, for too long, we try to do impossible thing to the part of the global civilization. We are not the part of the global civilization. We are civilization by ourselves. Huntington was absolutely right. Fukuyama was, abs with whom I have very interesting discussions, by the way, was absolutely wrong. There are civilizations with great S. And the end, in the end, and one of them is Russia. And we had no other possibility to prove 
that Huntington was right without attacking Ukraine. It's sad to say, I, but it's probably us who start this conflictual situation in order to be heard. And after that, all dialogue on this, on the premise of the existence of a global civilization is broken apart. So now we are isolated island. Russia is island. It is not the part of the world. It is big island, big isolated island. So, and here we come to the geopolitical understanding, geopolitical science. I started to develop geopolitics 30 years ago when Russia only started to feel herself the part of the global civilization, global West. And every, everybody was optimistic, becoming the part of this humanity, uh, civil rights um, um, theory, human rights theory, this global world. We entered in this process. We accepted the Western identity. We have abandoned Soviet identity. We have forgotten Tsarist pre-Soviet identity. And we try to be like everybody else. And in that moment, not being too much engaged in the Soviet system, neither in liberal system, I have discovered geopolitics formulated by English, British authors like Halford Mackinder, who tried to explain the great game between British Empire and Russian Empire in the terms of sea power and land power. Maybe it was in his time situational, a part of the British imperialist um, thinking of the world, but in my eyes that was explosion of the real truth. And after that, I followed Mackinder, and I have discovered that we had Eurasian movement in the uh, 20s uh, in, the, in the West uh, among white immigration. There was German school of geopolitics. So geopolitics was the mean, the tool to decipher the world we were in in the beginning of the 90s. From that moment, I started to develop uh, Eurasian School of Geopolitics and Russian Geopolitical School. And from this point of view, basing on the British vision, of Anglo-Saxon vision of the, uh, of the world, the main principles were sea power against land power. What is sea power according to uh, Mackinder? It is not just the West. It is modernity. It is technology. It is capitalism. It is uh, market society, it is uh, Carthage against Rome, or Athens against Sparta, or Venice against Byzant, uh, Byzantine Empire. So that was one civilization basing on the materialist approach and strategically on the dominance overseas, on the colonial attitudes, against the other kind of civilization where totally different values were put in the center of the life. The dignity, the uh, military power, um, tradition, conservatism, uh, national interests, families, religion, Christianity. So modernity against the tradition inscribed in the space, in, in, in the historical space. That was geopolitics. And applying this methodology to Russia, I came to the conclusion that that explains everything that is now and will come. So from that moment, applying this method to analysis of Russian Federation in the early stage, I deduced from this application that there will be the big war between continents, the great war of continents. So confrontation between 
sea power and uh, land power. Land power represented by Russia, by Heartland, and sea power represented by modern globalist, postmodern liberal West. So, that went radically against all the everything that uh, Russian government in the 90s thought. But I was hurt by Russian military. From the beginning of the 90s, I started to, to make a lessons on geopolitics in Russian general staff institution. And for them, that was absolutely necessary because they have lost explanation of what is going on in the ideological terms, and they badly needed something as, as alternative. They could not understand why NATO went more and more closer to our borders with us abandoning our communist ideology. They since sincerely can, could not understand why. And with geopolitics introduced in the general stuff, everything was theoretically, at least logically, put in the, in the context. That was beginning of, of rise of the secret rise of Mr. Putin to power. Uh, and now, 20, 20 years, Putin tried to, to, to accomplish reaffirmation of the sovereignty of the land power and heartland and Eurasia in a peaceful way. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. So he, he, he said that, nobody listened. He um, tried to put that in the, some geoeconomical steps. Nobody uh, was, uh, no, nobody understood what he was doing. If finally, finally, there is only one explanation of what is going on in Maidan, in Ukraine, in the post-Soviet space in general. The sea power took the momentum of the fall of the Soviet Union, and now we are approaching to our president's discourse, but in the context. And there come the, uh, 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 the, the sea power took the momentum of the fall of the Soviet uh, uh, Union in order to, uh, to, uh, to take the seize the control over the liberated space. It is not about ideology, race, ethnicity, or religion. It was just that geopolitical game, great game renewed once more. And in that situation, Putin, when he came to power, started to reverse the fall of the Soviet Union, clearly. For him, it was the geopolitical catastrophe. Geopolitical, that is the key word geopolitical catastrophe, not ideological, no, neither national, nor ideological, nor racial or religious, geopolitical catastrophe. And this catastrophe consisted in the brute or rude fact, imposing the control of the sea power on the territories around Russia, that logically belong to the land power. There is no neutrality in geopolitics. So they, what we liberated, they took for themselves. Who they? Not the West, sea power. And Putin started to regain the control over post-Soviet space, following Brzezinski line. Brzezinski has said, Russia, will not return to the independent sovereignty without reacquiring the influence over post-Soviet space, uh, first of all, on Ukraine. So the fight for Ukraine approached from that moment, from the 
election of the Putin as historical leader of Russia, trying to defend our geopolitical interests. That is an explanation of what is going now. But the sea power proceeded. They continued to, 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 to try to take away from us the part of post-Soviet space. And when some leader of neutral, neutral or pro-Russian, pro or not so anti-Russian as, as, as it was necessary, came to power as Yanukovych, for example, they started to overcome and uh, put them down with any means. Regime change operation, Maidan. Putin has responded to Maidan by reacquiring Crimea and the part of eastern Ukraine. But that was enough. That was just defensive action of heartland against sea power. And the borders were so critical for, for Russia that conflict, next stage of the conflict, was inevitable. Absolutely by geopolitical lo logic. You know, I don't want, maybe you will discuss between yourself or with, with our uh, uh, other guest, who started that. I, uh, I, I don't want to enter in that discussion, who started. I try to explain why it started. It was, uh, it, it, it was, full, it was put into reality, why it uh, happened. Why? And not who started it. So, and what happened? And what is happening now? So, it is the fight between land power, very hardly damaged with the end of the Soviet Union, and still damaged after the fall of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Soviet Union, all these 30 years, by pressure of the sea power. And there come the moment when counter-attack began. The direct words of Zbigniew Brzezinski, with whom I met uh, 2005 in Washington. And that these words were written in his book, Grand Chessboard. Without Ukraine, Russia cannot become once more the empire. With Ukraine inside of Russian zone of control, it will uh, will become empire once more. That is a kind of law, nothing, not, not, nothing personal. And when I have asked Mr. Brzezinski, there was a chessboard between us there in the photo, whether he considered that chess, chess is the game for two. He has said no, it's for, for one. You make step, you turn the table, you make the other step. There is no other. The West, global West, uh, the West, after the victory over Soviet Union, globalist West, modern, postmodern, liberal West, doesn't recognize the other. There is one player chess game. Not three player, one player. You make, you make, you make the step, you turn the chessboard, you make the other. White, black, white, black, one player. That was very censored from Brzezinski part. We, we, ha, we saw that in Beograd, uh, in Yugoslavia, we saw that in Syria, in uh, color revolution in the, um, in, in the Arab world. We see it, is, uh, it in Iraq, in Afghanistan, every, in, uh, everywhere. One player game. And, and interesting, Brzezinski has dedicated his book to me with very important inscription, with the wish to Mr. Dugan to change completely his ideas, <laughs> to reverse these ideas. So, because I should, in order to be part of the of this uh, chessboard game, I my my mission is to help to Mr. Brzezinski to move the figures on the chessboard. There is no other option. No Macron, no uh, uh, nobody, no no Trump, no uh, no Schultz. Please move the figures as I told you, 
It's your mission. And Putin, appearing from the table on the other side, has said, can I take part in the, in the game? That is why we have attacked Ukraine. We just reappeared on the global scale as an active player playing against this great game as the subject, as sovereign player. We try to do that in, by all other means. So we, we, uh, was, uh, we weren't led to do that. There in the global, that uh, 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 to affirm multipolarity or sovereignty is prohibited not only for us, but for American president. When Trump tried to do something without this, uh, without this control, he was blamed and replaced brutally and demonized and put outside of, 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 the, of the rules. So, for sure, we have broken the rules. For sure, we have broken the rules of chess one, as one player game. It is hot, it is violent, it is bloody, as always. But that is the end, real end, of unipolar world where decision is taken only in one by one existing center. There is appearance of the second center. And at the same time, there is a appearance, manifestation of the third center immediately. That is China. That has its own position, its own Ukraine in Taiwan, and its own sovereignty already put under question and more and more directly reaffirming. So welcome to the three polar world with possibility to multiply the quantity, the number of poles, because it is not all. It's open possibility, and this possibility opens the window of opportunity for Europe to reaffirm its own geopolitical independence and sovereignty, not to be just mover of one um, um, Anglo-Saxon uh, player. That is opportunity for, for India. That is for sure opportunity for Latin America, for Islamic world. And that explains the last meetings of Mr. Putin with President, uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan, of uh, uh, President of Iran, and his relation with China. So geopolitical vision of this war or uh, military operation, special military operation in Ukraine is about that. It is about geopolitics. And the decision to be on one part or on one other part is not in favor or against Russian, uh, whether Russian, either Russian or Ukrainians. It is totally different choice. It's totally different option or whether you are with unipolarity, agonizing and still present here, or you side with emerging multipolarity, not necessarily Russian. It is not about bipolarity. Russian is too small now, too weak to afford uh, bipolarity. We just defend our right to be one of the civilizations one of the poles, accepting from the very beginning the uh, existence of other sphere of influence, other poles, other civilizations. The number of accepted big players is not limited. It is up to humanity to defend the, uh, define what humanity wants. So choosing the side now, with the West, whether with the West, either with the West or with Russia, it is the choice between unipolarity and multipolarity, not with Russia. You, you could hate us, but if you love yourself, 
you somehow take some distance uh, in front of the uh, Western univocal uh, indignation of what we have done. So history is like that. Putin is a less ideological motivated person that we could imagine. He is neither nationalist nor liberal nor, nor communist. He is just geopolitician. He is realist, pragmatist. And what he has done was absolutely inevitable by the rules of geopolitics if we accept that geopolitics is not the game of Brzezinski, one player game. That is the context. I finish here. So I could um, give the words to my colleagues or to answer your uh, question, but start with uh, uh, Valery Karovin, um, the, the one of the leader of uh, Eurasian, International Eurasian Movement.